All right. Well, we have an interesting little situation here. I've been watching the ES, and um, there was a nice little short setup last night, but it's sure not selling off in front of this. You would have expected people getting flat. So I think we're going to have an interesting little NFP. Might be really uneventful, but anyway, let's get uh, my screen up here and um there we go all right so yeah you know i i i if if um i mentioned yesterday when i did my my uh, reopen session that i kind of expected a little more energy to the downside here we're still holding right around the first hour high of yesterday which is, um, you know, you can look to see it over here on my TPO view, which is actually interesting. You know, we, we've held on to all the gains of yesterday, more or less. That surprises me, trading right around big fat whole number here, you know, 3,900. Um, as I said yesterday when I did the, the reopen session, it's kind of hard to imagine what sort of NFP number would surprise anybody? You know, <laughs> I mean, how good or bad could it be that it would shock people? So I really don't expect a lot from the number itself. But um, obviously, there's a whole lot of gaming going on. We're, we're moving back and forth between 95 and 02 really aggressively, given that there's a an economic quote unquote news item coming. Usually, it would be much quieter than that. So intriguing. We'll see what happens. Hey, CK, good morning. Or let's see. It's good morning here. I have to do my calculations or cheat and look at uh, it's evening in your, your neck of the woods. I think if he's in India, it's like exactly 12 hours or roughly, I think. It, uh, is it CK? Is it, is it 12 hours to me right now? I know it's close to that. Exactly. I remember. 11 to 14 yeah. something like that it's 12 hours and 30 minutes okay yeah i remember yeah. no if, if, that we talked about this once and i knew it was close but it's not exactly that <laughs> right now yeah that half hour is weird <laughs> the uh, time in general was weird you know and, my favorite highly relative oh very relative yes my, my favorite time related thing is if you fly non-stop direct from hong kong to los angeles you arrive an hour before you left <laughs> that's cool because <laughs> you cross the date line going backwards, right? Um, and the few times I've done that, it really wigs you out. And then going the other way, you lose three days. So it's like really, really a warp. Anyway, you can see we're, you know, we're building volume around this and it's a much bigger range than you would expect. You know, we're, we're trading from, it, we've traded as low as 95 recently, but 90, the 97 to, to kind of one, this, this little, it, much more aggressive right before an announcement than I would expect. So I'm I'm really curious to see, you know, I don't really care what the numbers are, obviously, just the, res the reaction to them. But it, it, it feels like, you know, instead of everybody kind of getting flat ahead of this, there's a lot of speculation going on about it. That, that's, that's what it feels like. And uh, that could create some crazy volatility once we see what the numbers are. So that's, Kind of the opportunity of doing an NFP trade, you know, you want to be at extremes, don't want to trade these things in the middle because, you know, that there's no opportunity there. So um, obviously, you know, if we can get up to yesterday's high area, you know, which is uh, what 14, I think we were. Let's look at that real quick. Uh, yeah, 1475 is where it was. So if we get up to that spot, you know, maybe overshoot that a bit, that could be a very interesting short. Um, actually, anywhere between here and there is interesting to me. I, I was short once already this morning. At two and a half was just a no-brainer to short that one right there. You know, right on the quarter number, it swept up there after some absorption and then swept right back down. That was a perfect short. But since then, it, it's been, like I said, it's been much more jittery and in a bigger range than I would normally see in front of an economic announcement. Although we still have a half an hour. So anyway. All right. So we have a couple of folks here. Good morning, everybody. Good evening, depending on where you are. <laughs> casual session we are open um to the public as well so we'll probably have some guests rolling in um it's open q a 
informal. I've got nothing else to talk about. We don't have NFP till the bottom of the hour. So by all means, if you have any comments or questions, let me have them. I'll do my best to give you an answer. Is there a trade I would do right now? Somebody's asking me privately. No, there's nothing I would do right now. I like that fade of the sweep. You know, if we got another sweep up, I'd probably fade it if it was dramatic enough like that one was. Um, you can see some absorptions going on right here now, but but we're not going down. That's the thing, you know. We traded down to this 95 and swept right back up. So this there's another little down sweep. Yeah, you know, it, normally this time of day, the volume starts picking up and this is common, but it's it's really unusual to see this right in front of a, um, an economic event. Yeah, see, there's another sweep up, you know. I can't imagine anybody's buying in earnest. So this has to just be algorithms playing around with the ticks and the ES, which is what it looks like. But the fact that it's going to the upside continues to surprise me anyway, but that's creating opportunities. Ooh, look at the book flipping over there as we, as we get near two again. So a puke of this level right here is shortable. If we could pop up to five, I'll, I'll short that in a heartbeat, but um it's too tricky right here. This looks like it might puke up a little bit like that last one did. So, you know, somewhere up in here would be interesting if we could catch a quick short before the number comes out. That little high volume note at four is probably the most interesting spot. Those two spots. Let's park an order there and see if it sweeps up just for fun, just for kicks and giggles. Since I have nothing else to really trade until the number, which is still 25 minutes away. So, uh, okay. Again, it's uh, casual. It's open Q and A. It's NFP at the bottom of the hour. So, questions, comments, put them in the chat. I'm um, just kind of hoping we get a sweep up that I can sell into. But other than that, I don't have any great trade ideas right now. We'll just watch it play out. <gasps> Oh, excuse me. I'm going to need more coffee here soon. Right on big fat hole number yet again, where, you know, clearly there's energy there, but it's surprising that it's sweeping up as much as it is. And then, then there's good trades back into the range if you can get short on one of the sweeps up, which is what I'm trying to do yet again. Oh, so the, the, the TPO situation is really interesting. We've, if I put this back a little bit, you can see we've, We've basically recovered that big drop that we had last week. And uh, now we're sitting right back on consolidation here. And you know, there's literally there's no other way to interpret this as temporarily bullish, you know, if it breaks out of here particularly. But um, boy, it sure is a, a spot where if if sellers are going to reassert themselves somewhere up here, you would expect to see it happening. So so it's very interesting uh, from the kind of where we are in the recent trading range point of view and what's been happening um, this morning. So I'm kind of anxious to see how this plays out. Look at all this. This is absorption of buyers right now is what we're seeing as it pushes up, but it's not going down. So, you know, you'd expect a drift down into the middle um, before the number, you know, 94, 95 area, maybe this, um, high volume down here at 92. You wouldn't expect it to be consolidating at the high end of the overnight range. That's surprising. Um, what else should I get you aware of? Volume is not horrendously low. It's low, but um, for this time of the morning, not bad. So, you know, lots of people playing. We're not well correlated, but we're, you know, we're not horribly uncorrelated. Just, uh, you know, YM's up and Q's down by, you know, equal quarter of a percent kind of thing. And uh, an ES isn't going anywhere, so as we were just talking about. So, you know, I wouldn't get too aggressive short um, unless I can get a sweep up. That's why I've got those orders sitting up there. If it sweeps up to me, I'll definitely let it fill those. And I can't imagine a breakout, you know, before the NFP number. Just that would be – I, I can't even remember a time that that would have ever happened in front of an, an economic number uh, in all my years of doing this. I literally can't think of one time where – you know, I would get filled on a situation like that and it would just run me over. After the number, yeah, that could happen e easily. But beforehand, no, nobody's going to push the volume that hard. And, you know, unless something else happens in the world, you know, ceasefire or, you know, some, that, that could do it. 
but with respect to uh, just the action this morning, it's highly unlikely. All right. Oh, people drifting in. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. If you're a guest, if you're not a TRG member, um, this is uh, kind of a what we call an ad hoc session. It's kind of a casual session around an event, um, this one being the non-farm payrolls numbers, which we're going to get in about 20 minutes. In the meantime, it's open q and I'll answer any questions about anything trading related and um, anything about setups or the TRG approach, uh, if you're curious about any of that. Obviously, TRG members here as well. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything, let me have them. I don't have a lot of material to, to give you for the next 20 minutes. Um, what we're looking to do, uh, if you've never seen me trade this before, I like to trade around these economic announcements. I'm basically looking to fade extremes. And today, the extremes are higher up than where you see these two orders. You know, the extremes are 14 to 20 ish above us or higher. Um, you know, we talked about that a minute ago. Look at where we are bounced to. You know, we recovered that drop over there on the far left, my TPO view here. So, um, so you know, anything can happen, but, you know, getting short in front of the number on a pop up is a good tactic. That, that works well for me. So, here we go. Let's see if we can. If it can push through two and a half, which is doubtful, that's, that's, I don't think we're going to get through there. But if it does, these guys should fill. I might just throw throw one there too. Again, the odds that it's going to extend this range and just keep going right in front of the number are low. So, you know, it's a relatively low risk scalp to do between now and the number. To leave a range, you know, basically we need new information. In this case, it would have to be aggressive buying. And other than a little stops run sweep like we're getting right now, come on, fill, fill, fill. Ah. Missed by two. Let's take that one. Anyway, I'm just going to see if I can grab a few ticks on that. Trying to do that with limit orders is tricky. As you saw, I traded on my limit order and I didn't fill. So I, I pushed it down and grabbed the market a little bit lower. I'm going to just take three ticks here, just kind of having fun warming myself up. This is running in um, nine different accounts right now. I am trade copying for those of you that are always interested in that. Um, I'm leading with a couple of evals I just got with the Apex sale that they're having, and I'm copying to some other funded accounts, and I'm copying to a cash account. So, now well, look at that. It doesn't want to give me my three ticks, does it? This is a really good way to kind of get a sense of what the Tate feels like before a number, you know, just trying to play with micros for ticks. You know, it should sell down from here. A nice a sweep up is possible, which I would definitely add into, as you can see. But, you know, we should move back into the range, particularly with the number coming up. Here we go. Now we'll fill our little three tick warm up. Nope, we traded to it again. Look at that. <laughs> this is too funny. This is what's weird. There's, there's a bid under the market before a number. I've almost never seen this. I'm, I'm going, I'm racking my brain trying to remember if I've, ever have seen this. Um, I don't know if you have your mic on, Lee. Um, JVC, feel free to jump in and comment on this one, too. Have, have you guys ever yes, seen? It, 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 it's, it's a little odd, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, who's buying up here? <laughs> Why would you, unless you knew the number, and even if you did, let's say, you know, the conspiracy theory that the number, somebody already knows the number. What what you know? Let, what would you know that would have you buying right now? Uh, there we go. Okay, we, so we got our three ticks there. And um, anyway, again, I I just do this to warm up. TRG members know this. I post my little warm up trades in the pit all the time. Uh, this is just a way of getting a sense for the action. And I'm just really stunned that there's a bit under this. And we've got these absorb these blue dots represent traded volume that traded on the ask. So, you know, unless price goes aggressively above it, it's absorption. And, you know, normally when you see that, it trades away from it pretty quickly, like it did the first two times. Well, look at this now. We're just sitting here. So, you know, the buyers are getting absorbed, but the sellers are not in control at all. It's fascinating. I'm going to cancel those orders just because this is weird and we could pop up here. And that would be a real interesting place to short. In the meantime, let's just, uh, you can see I've got my fast uh, time-based wave volume linear regression views up here. I'm also going to bring up a copy of my structural 
30 minute, which is on the other monitor. This is just a duplicate. Um, this is the overnight Globex so far on the right. You can see our overnight high is not far off. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're actually rotating up, which is so surprising. You know, when you did your live session yesterday, Lee, it was weird yesterday, too. We, we were commenting on that. The action's just weird. Mm. Uh, look at this. Now we're at two and a half. I mean, normally I'd be fading the hell out of this up here at the extension of the range on big volume, but it just feels like. You could really get trapped doing that right now for whatever reason. You know, there's a bit under this. Look at this. Well, it's being driven up so that whoever wants to buy it back at 75 can sell it from higher. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, there's an, but there's enough of a, you know, they're, they're actually bidding it up. And normally, you know, this is what I see when people are selling, you know, getting short is, you know, it bids up, then there's a bunch of absorption and we trade back down. And look at this. Now it's on the buy side. There's absorption on the buy side. This is going to puke up. Ha. Huh. This is hysterical. I, strange conditions we are seeing. Well, anyway, that's an interesting spot to watch right now from where we are up to the overnight high and um, as, or the current overnight high of the Globex as we're uh, still 15 minutes out here. So, Kathy Wood, yeah, <laughs> exactly, Robert, my favorite person to pick on, but she just asked for it. Like, you know, humility would be a good. Oh, look at that. Now we're trading three. So fives and even seven. Look at the liquidity parked way up here. And nobody is getting aggressive between here and there. I can't remember the last time I saw a bid up into a big number like this. Um, or, you know, or a bid down. Normally people get flat and the market goes to value. And by that, I would mean I'd expect it to be right around here somewhere where the high volume is right around the VWAP, you know, and we're going the other way in front of a number. I'm, 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 I'm trying to contain myself. I can't remember ever seeing this before. Very interesting. Hmm. Well, Yes, she does, Robert. So anyway, one, one more time, those of you just drifting in, uh, we have a couple of guests here. This is also um, a TRG event. We're, uh, we're getting ready to see if we can uh, scalp some extremes when we do get the NFP number. And in the meantime, we're watching the market with a bid under it in front of a number, which is really weird. I, I totally agree with what Lee said. This, somebody's pushing it up to get short into it, but they're doing it with too much volume. It doesn't make sense. This would normally be sweeping up and, and then sweeping back down if somebody's aggressively you know, running their algos to sell into a market. That's, this is not what this looks like. This feels like there's a bid under here. And I don't get it. Anyway, um, we will find out soon enough. Very, very interesting conditions. Again, this is, is the thing I'm watching the most closely. My far left uh, panels here, these are Sierra chart TPO views. And we have recovered that big down day we had. We are right back on that range. And you know, hard to not interpret that as, as reasonably bullish, particularly if we can you know, break out to the upside from here, which... Doesn't seem out of the question right now, surprisingly. Um, the edge of this uh, Globex session is not very good. So I, I'd be stunned if we didn't revisit the uh, yesterday's high at some point. We might even do it before the number comes out. You know, it's only 10 points higher from here. Okay, that's what you'd expect to see. See that sweep up just got sold instantly, but it only dropped by four or five ticks. Again, you know, I'd expect this to be trading hard back into the range. And there's, there's people on both sides of the trade. That's really surprising. All right. There's one other thing I wanted to um, bring to everybody's attention. Um, just kind of, again, this is context, and I'm just kind of filling time <laughs> since we're waiting for the number. Um, I'll just bring this over from my other screen as well. This is the internals from yesterday. And uh, that's the advanced decline. And, you know, we opened strong and never looked back yesterday. That's really bullish. You know, normally uh, in a bear market, quote unquote, you know, we would see an open strong and it would sell off. And we saw that a lot of other times. But th this had really good upside volume, too. This is up down volume. This is advanced decline. And this is the tick and the cumulative tick. And again, very strong all day. And you know, normally, 
you would have expected to see that get sold in, sold into, and it never did. And then here we are this morning; it's still not getting sold into. So, I, I would have a really hard time arguing that this is a really great spot to be short, even though. If you were at my session uh, for the reopen last night, I was arguing I'd love to get short a little bit higher up from here. And and I still want to do that. I think that's a reasonably good risk reward idea. Um, But boy, this is making me, um, it's keeping me risk managed in my head as I'm watching this. I'm thinking, you know what? If we can break that, that, you know, week overnight action and get up to that overnight high or yesterday's high there and, you know, potentially get up from that. I, there's nothing above us. I, certainly, you know, the top of the day we dropped from, and that's, that's a good 50 points higher. So this could be a really interesting session. Having said all that real quickly, just a reminder, what we're doing this morning, we're doing NFP, which is uh, open to the public. We're doing it right now. Uh, feel free to ask any questions in the chat. I will get to them as soon as I can. And then the other thing we're doing uh, normal, my normal TRG live sessions, for uh, for the open, we'll immediately follow this session. So we'll wrap this one up about five minutes before the top of the hour. But look at that. Okay, God, I'm so tempted to sell into this right there. Oh, let's take one. What the heck? That's just too good a spot. All right, short and four. Let's just see if we can catch a point here. There's three ticks. Three is always easier than four when you're scalping. And again, I'm just kind of doing this to warm up. I should be able to get three ticks on that setup instantly. And look at that, it's trading two. It doesn't want to give me three. Too funny. This, you know, it should fall into this low volume. It should just sweep right back down into that. It swept up to the liquidity, it's trading, and we're not going down. There's a bit under this. So weird. This will fail ultimately. I'm not worried about this, but. And again, I'm just warming up with micros, but it's just stunning to me that we're not seeing more aggressive selling here. Let's reset the current there and watch it. Still have about nine minutes, so, you know, there's plenty of time here, but this is just... I I could have taken two ticks on this short immediately, but normally three is easy to get. Four on is what's tricky to get when you're scalping these these little liquidity pukes. Okay, this we should get our three ticks right now. If we don't, then I'm really surprised by this action. Okay, there's two again. One more. Come on, trade down one more. God, look at that. There's a bid right there. Stunning. All right, there it goes. It's about to fill. Okay. One more push down. We should fill right there. There it goes. People are pulling orders. The bid, there the uh, flip chart's flipping over. One more push, or I'm going to just get out here. Uh, again, this is just kind of warming my brain up. And well, I do not like that that's not selling off more aggressively. Uh, let's take two ticks. Just get out of the way, even though, you know, up here, I shouldn't have to scale that tight at all. But, you know, you got profits take them, particularly when the market isn't doing what you entered the trade to do which is it swept up. I would have expected to immediately sweep down. It's dribbling down. There's a bit under it. People are doing what I'm doing. Surprising me. All right. Let's see. No comments or questions. All righty. The number comes out in eight minutes. And again, the whole idea here is not to try to predict the number. It's to trade the reaction to it. And this this bid here is really surprising me. So, you know, we could get a really nice pop up if the number, you know, is it all close to what everyone's expecting or is a positive surprise? You know, as I've said, uh, since the top of the session, I, I have a hard time imagining what that would be. You know, the, the numbers, uh, you know, no matter how good or bad they are, you can interpret it any way you want with what's going on in the economy. So I just, I don't think, you know, there's any number that's just going to blow our doors off good or bad here. But judging by this bit under the market, I'm very hesitant to be short. <laughs> so um, let's see what happens. We got a decent little turnout this morning. Thanks everybody for coming. Try to do these at least uh, for NFP and FOMC, these open live sessions. They're always kind of fun to scalp.
people always say, oh, you can't trade the numbers. And, you know, a lot of the eval firms used to prevent people from trading around the numbers. And the, the trick is not to try to predict them. You know, the reactions are often very tradable, but trying to figure out what to do, you know, like parking orders before the, the numbers come out and whatnot, that's just silly because you never know what's going to happen. You know? And it goes into price discovery as soon as we get the numbers. And, you know, that's the opportunity is to, you know, see the extremes of the price discovery, not to try to predict the future, which way too many new traders make that mistake. They think that good trading is predicting the future and it's not. Good trading is reacting to what the market is doing with a consistent process. Okay, we're almost there. Six more minutes. I'm really surprised the market is holding up here at, at, at 02 and 0175. Under any other day, I would be really short here, at least looking for a trade back to, you know, zero, zero. But every time I've tried it, I, you know, I've gotten three, four ticks, two ticks, and it's been work. And normally it isn't. So, you know, when the market does that, your first reaction, you know, if you're a new immature trader, you know, you get angry, you revenge trade, you know, you scale up. Those are all the wrong answers, obviously. The right answer is to... um step back and wait for more information. You know, the market's giving mixed signals and that's dangerous. So let's see what's going on in some of the other areas. I haven't really been watching oil or let's real quickly, got a minute. Let me bring up my six up view here. This is the indexes and oil and gold from Think or swim, it's an old platform, my legacy, old trading world from a decade or two ago. And I'm just kind of looking, the patterns are pretty similar. We're nicely correlated. Oil's back above 100. It's kind of in a range, nothing going on there. I've given up even paying attention to gold. It's useless lately. Not, not even a trade there. So, okay, nothing new to see. Look at this, we're back up at three and a half. I, I, um, I continue to be stunned by this, Lee. And <laughs> you see that. Look at this. We're trading at the extreme of the overnight in front of you know, one of the biggest numbers of the month. Every yeah, month. I'm just looking at the top of YM and NQ, and they're, they're, they're just showing that stops got triggered. So I, I don't think they've got high enough. You know, it's not to say that in the moment we're not going to go down to go up, but look, you know, NQ traded back to previous high yesterday. YM. Mm -hmm. Was it YM yesterday that did that and then stops to the tick and then has gone higher? Uh, yeah, YM it was, was leading it, us yeah, as this well is, yesterday. Yeah, I'm blowing them all up here so we can see what they did yesterday there. So you can, there you go. So yeah, YM closed right, we, we are right on yesterday's high right now in YM. Yeah, and so. overnight it was stops that triggered at the top and NQ was stops that triggered at the top. So yeah. You know, it's saying to me we haven't gone high enough, and it's not so we want to buy it here. But um, yeah. I'm, I wouldn't want to short it before I see it go higher. Yeah, I, you know, I really like a push down long trade. I, that's a really good idea this morning. If we can get anywhere at the other end of this range, that'll be really, really interesting. Where's the overnight low here? It's quite. Let's see. Overnight low has UB and it's down what at uh, is that eighty two seventy five? Let's see if that's right. Let's get my my yeah, thirty. Uh, it's a long way away, isn't it? And we've got to get yeah. through. We've got to get through eighty five. Yeah, which has a big delta. delta. Look at that. Yeah, and everyone can see that um, gap from the sweep yesterday at seventy five. So this this push up can just be, you know, punishing everybody who's trying to get down to the really visible things. Yeah, this is a, this is one of the more interesting NFP setups we've seen, and uh, and now on this rotation there's UB at the high, so on the pullback there. So yeah, this is going to be a very very interesting open here. Uh, what just happened? Well, the liquidity just everyone just totally disappeared. Look at that! Yeah. Everyone pulled their orders. So yeah, this is now the fun's <clears> going to start. Okay, we've got two minutes. I'll be right back and. Um, We'll see how we'll see how this goes here. It should be fun. I'll leave this 30 minute up here too so we can watch it. Be back in one minute. Okay, I'm back. Here we go. 
lock and load. I'm gonna reset this volume. You know what? I'm gonna just reset that one. Let's just let us see what the recent rain. Whoa, look at that. Ha-boom. <laughs> okay, well, that was a pop up down. Look at that. Big sweeps. Price discovery. Maybe we can get a spot to nibble long here. At the, I, I would definitely buy the bottom end of this range if we can test it, at least on the first try. But it's coming down a little too aggressive for that. Okay, here we go. Now we're at a spot that could be interesting right here. Hmm, still moving around too much to trade it. Can't take profits if it's sweeping both ways. So I'm going to be very, very patient here. Boy, I, I like that overnight low idea now. It's right. We're coming up on it. So look at that. Remember we talked about 85. It's got that big delta on it. And then the UB at the low. If we can touch that and, and, and some buyers step up, I, I, will, I will buy that too. So let's see what happens. I, I'm tempted to buy it here, but it's just too sweepy. I'm going to reset my dome here. You can see how sweepy it is. It's just, you know, it, it's moving around four, six, eight ticks at a time, both ways. You know, even if you get a good entry in a trade, getting out with your profits fast enough is, you know, you just can't do it in price discovery. So you got to let it play out. I mean, you could be scaling into it, this idea along with micros. That's not a bad idea either. But again, we still have, you know, the potential to get down to 82 really fast is there. And that's 10 points down from here. So it's just way too much risk to try to, you know, catch a falling knife. But if it falls to that spot and, um, and doesn't, you know, aggressively see more selling, then I'm very uh, likely to just hit the market and buy it. So let's see what happens. Could park an order down there. That's not a horrible idea. Park a couple down like at 80. Let's see if it's, that's just a micro. So no biggie if that guy fills. Let's see if it, there's some liquidity down there. You can see it's right here. It's my, my white represents more liquidity and dark represents less. So it's coming down. Let's see if we can catch that overnight UB there and maybe catch a reaction long here. I'm probably front right. This is probably, if it does go there, it's probably going to push hard down. So I'm probably going to be on the wrong side of this if it does fall right away. But it's worth a try, particularly with a micro or two or three or four or five here. So let's see what happens. We're right on that big delta there. So, you know, that's passive buyer. Will that hold? We'll see. It was a passive buyer. Any comment, Lee, you want to add to the structural situation here? Um, just eight, 85 is just the interesting level at the moment and whether it gets yeah. through it. And if it gets through it, then 75 has to be interesting. Yep. Let's see if we can bust through this and maybe catch a little long scalp going the other way. Okay, here we go. If we're going to get it, we should get it right now. Right. We're right on the other side of that delta. We, we cleaned up the UB by a couple of ticks. Oh, come on. Let's get that filled. Okay. So I'm long here from 80, 75. I want to protect this, but I might not get the chance. So let's just see if we can catch a four-pointer here. That's worthwhile. Make that a three-pointer. It's slowing down. Boom. All right. Three points in the bank. Again, you know, just a micro, but I am copying the seven accounts. So yeah, almost a mini. Um, I, I'm not sure we're done going down. We got a little price projector there. We took out the UB. It, it's the buyers are there, but you know that's that first scalp that I just did. That works almost all the time because it's just you know you're fading the reaction. But you know if it doesn't continue to react back up, you know it's probably going lower. That's what I'm, I'm reading right now. I think we're still going to go a little lower. Like Lee said, you know down here it gets interesting to nibble again. The next chunk down if it busts through this low, but right now the buyers are coming back. Let's uh, tune these circles up a bit. So it, <laughs> we've got a few too many circles here. There's just lots of high volume nodes. So um, I, I like this again a little bit lower for another one of those little snapback longs. I don't like it short, um, and I don't want to be real aggressive long here because this could be the beginning of a of a nice down move here which is why I was trying to get short at the other end when we were before the number that we were talking about. But boy, this is lots of energy right here. I'm going to reset this footprint and get a new view of that and see where that trade is. Looks like it's getting absorbed. Looks like the buyers are getting absorbed, but then every now and then that happens and we have a little pop. So tough call right here. I still like it long, but I'd love to, to see a push down 
the same level again, maybe lower. That would be interesting to nibble again. Yeah, buyers are coming back. All right, so let's see. I'm reading. Yeah, that's the yeah, the PM getting shot. That that's in the that's been in the news for a while though. That happened a lot earlier. Um, but that is true. Very unfortunate. Well, don't want to do anything here. I like along further down again, but I might not see it. This actually looks like a pretty orderly low down there, stops up there. So maybe we'll get another opportunity to do this. We'll see. This session will go till about five of, so we'll go till uh, another, what is that, you know, 20 minutes or so. And uh, and then we'll wrap up this session and I'll reopen the room with the uh, the normal TRG Friday morning. So, um, boy, now, you know, so this is what I would have expected to see before the number, sitting right in the middle, right on the, the view app, you know, with a high volume node there. This is, you know, the market pretty much agrees on value right, right at the moment. So, again, I, I wouldn't mind getting long on a push down. And could have been a little more aggressive on the one I did buy, but should have, could have, would have, you know. The beauty of copying a small trade across multiple accounts is you get to, to, to scale up a little bit without having a lot of risk. You just have slightly higher costs. Um, and and that's, that's a good business plan in, in these conditions. Certainly if you're trying to take advantage of the capital of the uh, evaluator firms. Oh, there's a nice sweep down. All right, maybe we'll get a little energy back to the low here. Nice sweep down number two. Okay, so the sweeps will be friendly if they get to the low. It will sweep into my trade. That's a friendly sweep. So and there's another one. Okay, so that's three in a row now of sweeps down. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of the range and get another long here on those. I might be too far down with this one. I'm going to scoot that up to like there just to get above that first chunk of liquidity. Um, but it'll probably, you know, it will liquidity acts like magnets, so it's probably going to trade to it. I think 75 could be in play here, but let's see if we can get a couple of longs on between 82 and 75. That's what I'm trying to do here. Why such a big range? Because you never know where it's going to, you know, do the snap. And there's lots of liquidity down here. So, you know, the risk of getting filled and having it run me over is low. It's possible. But, you know, that's a nice bottom. There was a price rejector on the pullback. So clearly there's some demand down there. So I'm not like taking extraordinary risks by fading this edge. You can see the volume disappeared as we got down. This is where all the volume is. So trading down here is an acceptable fade of a break. So let's see what happens. Now there's some liquidity right there on 85. We've watched 85 has been in play a few times. That actually isn't a bad place to try to enter with the first one. I'm um, being more conservative down here, but putting one there isn't a horrible idea either. It's right on the bottom of this range. There's some liquidity there. It's probably going to go through there, but that's not a bad spot. You can see 85 got so aggressively traded. Okay, there we go. So we got filled on that one. And again, I'm just going to scalp for, you know, two, three points at a pop when I get fills. I'm not going to try to catch runners. All right. Let's see if we can get more size on here. And probably not. I'll take five ticks on that one. And boom, we got it. Okay. So wash, rinse, repeat, you know, um, find places to park yourself. Let it come to you. Grab your ticks, get back out of the way and do it again. That's this is how I, I trade economic events, the reactions to them. I've been doing it this way, I don't know, 30 years. And um, it's always worked well. You know, the market always overreacts and then it settles down. Today could be the beginning of a down move, though. You know, look how aggressively we came down. I'm going to minimize this for a second so you can see all four of them. And, you know, all we're doing is kind of holding on at the low. You know, we, 
which is why it's a good scalp long. But, the, you know, could we blow through that low and, you know, revisit uh, yesterday's low, you know, the initial balance low from yesterday? Absolutely. You know, I, that could happen. Um, so, you know, I could end up getting off sides here, but the odds that I could, that that'll happen without me being able to catch some ticks first and get out of the way before it, I'm off sides, it, that's what's very unlikely. Usually this particular approach, you can almost always take money out of the market as long as you're, you're very, very particular about where you, where you put yourself. So 95, 85 is still in play and you can see we traded through it and then bounced really aggressively. So that's still interesting. I like 82 much more down here. The push down here would be really interesting to get long. So, um, but so far, you know, it, it hasn't been able to get down there again. So, so I'll watch 85. I might buy it if it gets there again, but I'd really like to see an aggressive sweep into the, the next level of liquidity because that'll be a really nice opportunity or it won't, you know, or the bottom falls out and we'll know it right away and we'll get out of the way. So it'll be really clear what's happening at that moment. Okay. So again, if you're a TRG, you know how things work. If you're a guest, feel free to ask questions. Um, that's why I open these things up to the public. We've had a couple of nice little scalps here. Again, I'm just kind of warming up in micros and I'm copying them. So it's, it's, it's like playing them any more or less. Um, and I, you know, if I, when I'm not doing these live and having to deal with zoom and whatnot, I, I, I'd be doing this obviously with more size, but you know, it's, 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 it's paying lunch money right now. Let's just say that or beer money. All right, we're getting some aggression. We traded through 85. Let's see if we can get a fill here on that. Ah, gosh, I missed by a tick again. Look at that. <laughs> I pushed it up. I, I came to it because I could see it getting bought. Let's see if we can get bought on this push down. And, and again, I think this is going to trade. I just want to get a good entry and catch some scalps the other way. Um, but I think we're going to go lower. We can make money before it does that, like this right here, you know? So let's just take six ticks again. And there it is. Okay. So that's the fourth one. Can do those all morning. Could be more aggressive. Definitely. I'm not being very aggressive, but I think we're going to trade down here again. Let's give it another one. So we have about uh, 10 more minutes or so. If there's any questions or comments, there goes NQ down. I think I'm going to get a fill here. And once again, well, this one could blow through it because that's the ledge. So if that ledge goes, it'll probably end up down here and I'll get filled on my other ones. Let's watch that ledge. You can see there. One good sweep down should do it here. Boy, it's trading right on the 82 and a half quarter. Ah! Again, I missed by a tick. <laughs> oh, how many times does that happen, JVC? You can set your watch by how often that happens. 42 times. Yeah, exactly. Let's put that right there. And so at least it's on the price that traded. Now I should get filled. Okay, we got a fill there. What are we at? 81.75. See if we can catch a, a seven ticks there. That's good. Should go lower. We should get filled down here too. It's pretty good aggression now, but the sweeps up have been nice. So I think we can take some money out of this. And here it goes, right back to that high volume node. And we'll go for six again. Ooh, swept down strongly there into a buyer. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Now he that's a seller right now. We could go hard down. So, oop, swept down, got filled, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I can protect this, try to catch a runner. Boom. All right. That, so that I, you may not have seen what happened there. That happened very fast. It swept down. It filled that order I had parked at seven, seven and a half, came right back to the range. So those, that two lot I had was very, very profitable, really fast. And I, and I just took profits. So you have to go back and see the recording if you want to see that in, in real time. But yeah, basically, we took out the lows with stops and we swept down. And that's why I park orders down there on you know spots that I think will do that too. That is a perfect example for TRG folks of a friendly sweep, a sweep to put me into a position or take me out profitably. That was a perfect example of that. Cool. All right. So, um, mm -mm -mm. all right. Questions, comments. Um, 
I'm glad that happened. That that's a perfect example of how to trade that and and where to park yourself and so that that happens to you. And that, we're we're probably still going to go lower. You know, it, it's the first reaction that you're always scalping of a, of a puke like that. And that one just telegraphed itself that it was coming so clearly. You know, it, it couldn't. Have, I, the only way I could have done that better was to do it with a bunch of minis. But that that was was the absolutely best way that works out. And you know, we're, we're, there's down pressure now. You know, we've had a couple of big absorptions. You can see that there's now one at eighty. Remember, we had the one at eighty five that we talked about earlier. This, this is, in fact, I'd love to hear as we're going into wrapping this up, Lee. Could you give us your structural sage wisdom on what we are seeing right now? I think it's very interesting. Oh, I, it's all about what happens at seventy five now. Um, you know, from above 85, when it pierced 85 and 80, that push down wasn't low enough. Yep. So it's, you know, we, we're at this point right now where RTY has just gone one tick lower, it looks like. Um, it yep. is teasing that big absorption level at 75 from yesterday that got busted through. So we need to see what happens. Um, at, that run of zero prints above it, 75 and a quarter up yeah. 76. And then what happens if 75 trades? Yep. And this looks like we're about to find out here. Yeah. Look at that. Cool. This is great action for those of you that, you know, don't see a lot of great action pre-market. This is as good as it gets. It's, you could be trading this short, obviously. I, you know, I like the snapback longs, although I wouldn't be doing that here. It, it's trading down pretty hard and, you know, there's no snapback so far. Here's 75. There's the zero prints. Wow, looks yeah. like absorption at 75, 1800. Yeah, that might not be a bad spot to grab. Whoa, got swept on that one or, down. Or, or not. Or not. <laughs> yeah, or not, right. I, I think it'll actually work. I just think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a couple of entries to get this trade right. Let's see here. We'll put some of those up there. And that was pretty aggressive, but I think we're going to snap back. Let's see. Uh, maybe not. Ooh, this is a perfect one. Let's see. Ooh, wow. All right, stops again. Trading really hard down now. Wow. Look at that. Let's get one more of those. Just, you know, there's no volume up here, so it should sweep up pretty quick here. But people are obviously going to sell into that, so I'm going to take profits pretty fast here on the first chunk if I get them. One good sweep up. And again, this would be a friendly sweep. A sweep up would sweep me out of this position profitably. That's what I'm talking about. But I'm taking some heat on this one, obviously, which I expected. You know, look where we're trading. We traded through that. We got some more stops. Now there's a bunch of zeros above us. Crazy action. This is actually really fun stuff. I'm digging this. I'm going to take all three of these off right around that 75 spot. That'll be a beautiful exit to that trade. And here it comes. I hope. <laughs> now I think we're going to. Be able to add a little bit maybe here. Yeah, maybe not. Now, here come the buyers again. Oh, we may run out of time. I may have to end this. Oh, no, we still have some time. Okay. Let's watch. High volume node building. We should, we should be able to trade off of this to the upside, at least for a, back to this big chunk of liquidity that we sold through. That big negative delta there. Sellers are in control at the moment, though, despite the zero prints and the sweep down. Well, that's why we got the zero prints and the sweep down. It was an aggressive push. Here we go. Okay, come on. Let's get a sweep up so we can exit this puppy. Tick-tock, I was... <laughs> Come on, big high volume chunk right there. Sweep right into it. Let's put them all at 75 or lower. So this is fast. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need to go get more coffee before my next session market. So let's get this over with one way or another, either break down or pop up and let's do it. I'm going to start wrapping this session up because I need to go get coffee before my next one. And this will play out or it won't. I'm pretty sure it's going to fill me here in a second. But um, we could break to the downside. NQ is doing the same thing. It's kind of consolidating. You can see what went on at the low there. Um, you know, that was a pretty good move down, but it's stalled. So we should be able to get out of this with our profits. But if it continues down aggressively, I'll get out of the way. That, and that's a possibility as well. Here we go. Here's our buyers. Come on, boys. 
sweep me out of this so I can show everybody how that works before I get my coffee. And we could puke down here. This could go either way, but it's mostly on the buy side, so I think we're okay. Not very aggressive either way. One more chunk of buying, as I said, will do it. So we'll just watch. There's a little bit. One more of those, and we're good. Okay, here it comes. All right, let's get out of this. One, two, three. Okay, so there's another $15 times seven. So I'll take it. All right, are there any questions, any comments? Um, that was fun. Thank you, Lee, for your structural um, view. It That was a perfect synthesis of price, action, and structure, wasn't it? Mm. We don't we don't get to see that that often, so that was kind no, of fun. And look at that; how it's just nibbled back into the zero prints left by that sweep, and that's yep. probably heading down. I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you couldn't ask for more telegraphable. Look at that; you know, it's just it's beautiful. And now we've got we've got that um, that negative delta there. Yeah, this is going to be a great live session. So I'm, I need to get coffee. I'm going to wrap this one up. Um, so let's do burning desires. Are there any final questions, comments? Uh, thank you, guests, for coming. This was a fun little session. Um, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad TRG folks got to see that example. That's a really, really good example of of the synthesis of structure and price action at an inflection point. To make it sound really intellectual, JBC, would you like to add any final comments? Trade carefully today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and I'm going to go get more coffee before my next session. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you in a few minutes in the regular TRG live session.